before, before we move to the lightning talks, uh, we have a special announcement to make. So uh, I would like to um, uh, announce Naomi Cedar. She's the uh, director of the PSF, and she has a special announcement to make. So please welcome Naomi. Just like the tech, could you put the standard on, please? Well, get rid. We don't have any laptop here. So. There we go. Great. Okay, stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have a, a brief moment of uh, PSF business to take care of. Uh, and to that end, if I could be joined on the stage by Mark andre Lemberg, please. You may know that um, the Python Software Foundation uh, every quarter awards two people uh, the Community Service Award for their service to the community. You may also know that much, much more rarely we award uh, something that we call the Distinguished Service Award for truly exceptional service to the Python community. Uh, and if I were to tell you all of the things that Mark andre Lemberg has done for the Python community, well, I've already run over one talk slot today. I would be well over the second one. He has been core developer. He's been a founding member of the PSF, PSF board member. He has been almost everything in EuroPython. Uh, so uh, he's done a lot. And in fact, the problem is we couldn't recognize him because he was always on the committees and the groups that were recognizing <laughs> other people. Uh, but we have at last found our chance, uh, and we actually made this decision a number of months ago, but we felt that the only way, the only place to, to give this award would be here uh, at EuroPython, and with Alexander's help, maybe we have surprised Mark, and if we have, that is a rare thing indeed. So without further ado, uh, on behalf of the Python Software Foundation, it gives me great pleasure to award the Distinguished Service Award in recognition for decades of service, core developer, Python Software Foundation founding member, PSF board member, EuroPython organizer, board member, chair, with great appreciation, Mark andre Lamberg. So thank you, congratulations. Thank you all, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, you really surprised me indeed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've had some practice at applause. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the lightning talks. So, day two of the lightning talks. I was worried yesterday we only had nine submissions, which meant that we ran out of um, talks. Today. In the time that we had. So yeah, we've got 21 today. So you, you really took the, the challenge to heart. This is awesome. Can we have um, Pavlo, uh, who has a talk about async and Jupyter here? And can we have uh, Jill with Make Your Bot Talk up to the front of the stage somewhere? Awesome. Has uh, everybody had a good second day at the conference? Yeah, we've seen some good talks. Awesome. We've got amazing weather. It's not normally like this. So the average rainfall in Edinburgh is 191 days of rain per year. So that's every other day. And that doesn't stop in July normally. OK, All right. take it away. We're on. Nope. Windows, yes. Hello, um, hi, so let me start the timer. Here we go. Um, hi, so um, 
Asynchronous programming was a quite a hot topic uh, during this conference, so I want to share a couple of recipes with you. Um, so I'm going to be showing some code. There will be a live demo, so if you want to follow, that's the bit.ly link, so bit.ly async hyphen Jupyter. Let's get rid of the help. Here we go. So two things that I want to share with you is uh, if you're upgrading your um, uh, Jupyter notebook environment and you notice like Tornado got uh, up upgraded to 5.0, it may break your um, async code in your notebook. Don't be surprised. And second thing, I will show um, how to run IPy widgets uh, asynchronously um, instead of synchronously. So actually, I'll uh, start with live demo without further ado. Uh, can you see the code? I guess so, yeah. Okay, so I have two uh, notebooks uh, deliberately side by side. On the right-hand side, we have synchronous uh, IPy widgets. On the left-hand side, we have um, asynchronous IPy widgets. By the way, uh, IPy widgets, uh, if you're using Jupyter, uh, IPy widgets are great. If you don't know about them, uh, have a look at them, use them. So let me see what I uh, mean between. So let's go ahead and run both. This one, this one, all right. So um, widgets require handlers. So in interactive stuff, so you change something on the, uh, on the screen, you need a handler. If your handler is for whatever reason for uh, slow, like I have it here, uh, time.sleep. Um, so we sleep for only 0.3 of a second, so it's a slow function. Uh, but let's see what happens if I start dragging the, that slider. You see the top? Do you notice the top? Um, so the top number represents the argument, and uh, it updates on the same thread, so it becomes, uh, oh yeah, the pro yeah, it becomes slow. Let's see what happens on the asynchronous side. The bottom number um, is uh, the process number, so it updates with a delay, but the top number, there is no delay. So we're not blocking the main thread. And the difference between the handler, remember, you can always write asynchronous um, code by just, so here's the bit of code uh, that does that, okay? And the way we wrap it, we attach uh, this coroutine using, um, to an existing loop, okay? So that's first part, done. Um, yeah, we've done that. Now, yes, so the bad news, uh, um, Tornado 5.0 may uh, stop your async, async IO, specifically async IO uh, code from working because they started wrapping async IO loop, uh, so you cannot stop. So when you start it, like, the loop is already running. Uh, I can actually demo it. So here's the link. So it was actually in the release notes. Um, Uh, so here's a snippet that shows you, yeah, you get an exception at the bottom of the screen. It says the event loop is already running, so we can actually go ahead and, uh, how are we doing? We can actually go ahead and check that the status of the loop, and it says, uh, yep, the uh, event loop is uh, running indeed, so we can't close it. Now, how do we solve it? Uh, so we can create a task instead, instead of uh, uh, starting a, uh, attempting to start a new loop. So. Also, live demo. Uh, so there was a delay. I added what, 0 0.7 of a second delay. Yeah, here we go. So we, um, the way to solve it is just create a task and add a callback to, um, to your future. Okay. And I've got another way. So inspired by one of the talks during this conference, Trio. All right. So... <laughs> Yes, um, Trio makes it even easier, more intuitive to basically to um, uh, do it asynchronously. Yeah, and it works in a notebook. All right. Um, also, uh, you noticed, actually, I saw only one presentation that uses this plugin for the notebooks where you turn a notebook into a um, nice presentation. And uh, so here's the link if you are wondering how this uh, presentation is made. Um, and the link to the slides also there if you want to take a screenshot. And thank you. Awesome. Take it away, Jill. It's okay, I have a plan B. 
So uh, how to make your bot blabber? Um, just change the talk name. This is not about AI. I'm not that smart. So uh, I found a way to make your bot um, talk. So last year, uh, I gave a talk about how to make a Twitter bot. Now, the thing is that Twitter bot only said, I threw a die and the result was one to six. This was the code. Um, so here you go. I just threw a die and the result was, so the thing is that Twitter only allows you to send the same, uh, I honestly don't know, but if you send the same message to Twitter, it will, it will block, it, will, you, it won't let you send the same one. So after a few messages, you wouldn't be able to send anything. So this bot was a bit useless. Now the thing is, I found a new thing called Tracery by, by Kate Compton. Um, so Galaxy, no, not Galaxy. Tracery is a super simple tool and language to generate text. So this is basically the thing, uh, imagine a text, right? So you have an adjective, uh, a noun, something else. Um, so you can do that with format strings and variables and uh, lists. Uh, the thing is that uh, Kate found is that she was doing the same thing all over, over again. So she made tracery, and I'll show you the grammar um, later. But this is not about JavaScript, and that's made in JavaScript. So I found this other project by Allison, uh, which is called PyTracery, which translates Py uh, tracery into Python. Now, sorry about, sorry about this. Let's see some code. So this is the grammar, and yeah, no, this is, I'll show you something better. If we, wow. Just Arch Linux things. <laughs> and, oh, that's okay. Let's make it work. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, as you can see, some things change, change here. <laughs> so, as you can see, we have an action and uh, a noun. So we, can just, we just need to change that, and I'll show you the code. The code will be more complicated than what any of you would write, uh, but here's the, here's the thing. So we have the phrase, which is I action animal, right? And then we have a list of actions and a list of animals. What it does is the, the grammar will pick one randomly. Now there's some magic here. As you can see, uh, the animals are singular. And if you add the grammar dot s, you see that animal with the dot s over there? That makes it plural. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, so you see monkeys, dogs, pigs, and I only had uh, monkey and dogs. So to finish uh, this one, thanks human beings. Also, this talk was made with that. Can I, do you have time to show the code? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. View talk. I have another one, the one that breaks. Oh, what? Yeah, this also breaks. What's it called? View talk. So yeah. So basically, these are the options. I could have said, um, "Cheers, lads," or "Cheers, cheers, chaps," or "Cheers, human beings." Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Um, so, um, Chenfu, if you'd like to um, okay. take it away with Python package scaffolding. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my first EuroPython Lightning talk. Um, so, I want to, to talk about make a Python package in one minute because I find that there's not such a case in Python community to make automatically. Uh, make a package. And for that, I wanted to, if you have a lap laptop already, so you can do now pip install uh, Yehua, and, and then we continue. So we, I will show you, it's a live demo, and then in the end, in one minute, you have your own uh, uh, package. So the objective is that you do uh, make your publish your scripts your, from your hard disk to PyPy and after the talk. So very easy, so in one minute. And uh, so what I'm going to do is create a Python package in one minute and then share it on GitHub and publish it to PyPy. 
that's the objective. And I will talk um, while this uh, the script is running. I will talk why I think it's uh, quite useful in this regard. So hopefully it's already already I installed my utility. So so what you need to do is that project name. Let's say Euro Python to 2018. So showcase Python package. Scaffolding. Uh, this is most time consuming in during this one minute. So, <laughs> and, and then for GDPR, I'm not showing my emails. So your email at your org. Yeah, and usually in normal cases, you should put your email address here uh, so that uh, users can contact you. <laughs> and for this mobile, this is an organization. I put it as a, this is a real organization. Again, this is a real one. And, and package on, let's say, uh, uh, like this. And now uh, I'm going to make a um, command line interface. So I press 2. And then command line name, let's say, Yolo Python 18. Now we have the namespace back. So, oh, oh, sorry, I got there, uh, sorry, uh, a bit, I should choose two. I need, to. okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is, uh, you still got time, quick. I still got time, okay. Uh, unlicense. Uh, let's see. Okay, contact email, uh, none for now. <laughs> <laughs> to save time. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, this is the choice. Should command line interface. And then now is EP18. Okay, now it's doing the job, so I can continue the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so why why this talk? So you got a cool Python script in the hard disk. Why don't you share it? Why? So you share it on PyPy. I can everybody can use. So but then it says I need a setup.py. Independently, so can it read had a setup set pi project, which is a template you can copy and paste. However, you need to copy and paste by yourself. So it got, got 2,800 stars at the moment. And in addition, you probably want to supply setup.cfg so so as that you can build a universal views. And can you put on the GitHub as well, so that I can contribute. Then you need a readme. You need a license file, and for you to contribute, or for me to contribute, maybe you put a Travis file so you have a test running. And for that, psychologically, it takes more time than just it takes, right? And this is so many files, but each project I need to do that. And then the last question is, do you want to repeat yourself? Every time you got a script, you want to share to the PyPy and then GitHub, you do want to repeat that. So now, uh, so hopefully that has done the job is here. So the, the script says, everything is up to date. Please review the changes before commit. So everything is ready. So what's, what's needed for you to do? So what we needed to do at least do something. So Euro Python with Euro Python, we do main. And say def main, let's say, uh, hello. Uh, world, uh, world. Sorry. So that will be end of suppose you use your uh, main file. So let's say we want it to uh, install. That's it. And then. Okay. Hmm? Thank you, Chen Fu. I'm afraid that's your time up. That's it. So Marcus is going to talk to us about PyCon AU yep. this is, you know, in one minute. One minute. OK. Uh, so at, we had a, yesterday a talk that was from the Antarctica. You don't need to fly as far as there. And you can fly, actually fly then uh, next month in end of August, August 24th to August 28th. PyCon Australia is going to happen. There's four specialist tracks on the Friday. One is about security and privacy. One is DjangoCon AU. One is about education, one about Internet of Things, and the general conference has about 50 talks, four invited speakers, 
And it's generally a pretty amazing conference. And there are also sprints on Monday and Tuesday. And yeah, ticket sales open. There's still tickets available. There's still, last time I checked, flights available to get down there. Um, yeah, thank you. We should all thank come. You, Take it away. Look, ma, no slides. <laughs> Old style, like me. Started my program, professional program, career as program in 1984, 35, 34 years ago. Start learning in 80, uh, previous century. Um, and at that time, some people told me, okay, you are going a developer, cool. We'll last a couple of years, and after you will move to something else. Sales, uh, clients, whatever. And so lots of people want that. Uh, personally, I think that, that people don't like program, go into program as a step to go somewhere else. I love program, but how I still in business uh, after all these years, as the songs say. Because I have a problem. I got bored easily. After a couple of days, or at maximum a couple of weeks, I get bored of what I'm doing. I have to change. So, IT is the ideal field with the fast-moving change to have someone that get bored easily. And here I am, never bored. What leads to a small detail? I have used the word problem on purpose because I hate the word problem. The word problem triggers a problem in mind. If you are kind of neurolinguistics, uh, you will see that some words trigger some states of mind. We don't have problems, we have attributes, we have characteristics. And, may look like a parenthesis, but it's not. I think the most powerful emotion for humans are gratitude. Some people say that most powerful emotion is love. But perhaps love is just a state of profound gratitude to our partner. And I would like to uh, manifest my gratitude to uh, the speaker of yesterday, to Ed Singleton, that talked about autism, uh, being a program with autism, because bring us a huge example as we can put our attributes, our characteristics at our service instead of working against us. And so for that, of course, it needs a, a major part. It needs that I know myself very well. So self-understanding is a, a key part so I can know what I am and put it at my service. Time, Mark? Uh, you have two minutes left. Thank you. So, I would not say to you to go vegan. Well, first of all, because I hate someone to tell me to, what I have to do. But I can tell you that I haven't eaten meat for more than 10 years, eating fish for a couple of years, and recently go, going entirely vegan. And uh, it raises a lot of questions, but one thing I can tell you, I never felt bad, better in my life. I never felt with more energy. I never felt in a better mood. Even for, for programming, I never felt my brain, my mind working less fuzzy. And yesterday, I have the honor to meet someone that I have never met before, as the person or the kind of person, someone that is vegan from birth, because have the lucky enough to have vegan fathers that raised their child as fully vegan, and that authorized me to refer to himself, that is our colleague, Ranieri, say hello, please, 
If someone wants to know more about their experience, if someone is preparing to raise a child or have friends preparing to raise a child, perhaps it's interesting to think about what kind of substances we are going to put inside the body of our newborn baby. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul. I'm ready. Awesome. Take it away, Kyo. Hi, um, I'm Kyo Smallwood. Um, I'm a recovering sys admin I, <laughs> and recovering Perl programmer. Um, I work for a company called Flexitricity. Um, I'm going to talk about CBOR, which is a binary serialization format. Um, it was inspired by message pack. And by inspired, I mean, I don't like the way you're doing that, so we're going to do something different. <laughs> um, it's an ITF proposed standard, 7049 is the RFC. It uses a tag length value encoding, which is very common in networking. Um, it only uses three bits for the first part of the tag, and then the rest of the tag system is extensible. Um, it's designed to be very compact to write encoders and decoders um, for constrained devices. It supports recursive data structures, so if you have a list that references itself or whatever, no problem. And the tag system has an IANA registry, so tag 258 has been registered and it uh, is a Python set or other languages that support uh, sets as well. Um, the, there is a pure Python implementation um, by Alex Gronholm, who, I hope that pr I pronounced that right, uh, he's going to be giving a talk tomorrow um, about testing at 11.20, so uh, check him out. Um, it works in Python 2.7 to 3.7 probably. Um, he's just added support, preliminary support for that. Um, it's really clear, readable code, so it was easy for me to get started. Uh, it's got a great test suite. It captured all of my mistakes very quickly. Um, and it's the only Python library that supports canonicalization, which is um, the same data going in will always create the same binary at the end of it. So your maps are sorted if you choose to canonicalize. Um, you can use it when you need richer types than JSON or message pack, and when you don't want to write a schema, like for protocol buffers or Captain Proto or other things like that. And you definitely want it to be more compact than XML. I think everything is more compact than XML. Um, and when you need to put it on a constrained device, again. Um, what I use it for. Um, at Flextricity, we have a lot of time series data for frequency measurements and power. And um, it's really good for taking a, a CSV file and, and putting it into a much smaller, more compact format. Um, although Apache Parquet is probably better supported for this use and faster. Um, it's also really good for simple passing between processes, um, particularly when you want to serialize date times. Uh, because with JSON, you have to write a JSON encoder class. Anyway, um, messaging for constrained nodes, it, it, it really does take up, the, the C encoder takes up a tiny amount of space. Uh, you can also use it for dissecting network protocols. There's a few new protocols that the IETF are working on that are based on CBOR. Um, the DNS GRASP discovery protocol um, there's also a FIDO2 authorization over Bluetooth that uses CBOR as its encoding. Um, and Sierra Wireless uses it for a couple of their uh, device metrics and things. Um, and in the future, um, maybe we could get it in MicroPython. Um, I want to try doing an implementation in NIM because that looks cool. Um, and yeah, and that's it. Thank you, Keo. Big round of applause, please. Take it away. Okay. 
Ready? So I want to start my talk with a question to the audience. Please uh, raise your hands. Who do, do you know about it? How many knows? Oh, oh maybe 10% of the audience, more than I expected. So uh, this is the second question. <laughs> And actually, maybe you don't know that every time you fire IPython, you are importing the decorator module. And it's not only that. Several frameworks, web frameworks, non-web frameworks, are importing it. It's one of the most downloaded packages. Has been there for 13, 13 years, since 2005. And it start, actually started uh, as a hack. I thought, uh, well, this will uh, leave one year, maybe, this project, because the next release uh, of Python, they probably will fix uh, this problem that this module, the decorator module is meant to, to solve the signature problem of the decorators, that essentially, I want to preserve the signature or, or a decorated function. I thought this they will fix in Python. Or maybe not, because after 13 years, uh, uh, the problem is still in Python 3.7. Now there is the signature object, so the, the problem is, uh, was hidden under the carpet, but still there. Anyway, this uh, to show you that the project is still alive. I, I, I make new releases every year. Uh, this year I've done already three releases. Last year, four releases. Okay, at the beginning, ten releases the first year. Then Here there was a, a gap uh, during the Python 2.7, uh, Python 3 transition. Uh, now it's still working. It works for Python 2.6. 27, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 7, every, every version of Python, okay? It's a joy to maintain. Uh, I have very, very little problem. L most people don't know about it, so they don't ask questions, which is fine. <laughs> and essentially, I do something major only when there is a new Python release. Like, for instance, I don't know, you have async functions in Python 3.5, then I want to decorate async functions. That's a, a good reason to do something new. And just to, to make the, the, my point, what, what's the problem that I'm trying to solve? This is the recommended way to write decorators in Python, if you look at the Python documentation. As you see, it's kind of ugly because you have these uh, func tools, wraps to call, uh, you have a nested function. But okay, it's not particularly difficult to, to understand, but the problem that is not does not work. What does not work is actually, you see this wrapper function, the signature is star args, star star keyword args. So actually the signature of the decorator function is this one, okay? And your two, the uh, documentation tool will tell you the, the truth, that signature is this one, while the original function had a different signature which was x and y. Okay, this is a problem, and the decorator module is able to solve this problem also makes the, the syntax a bit nicer because you don't need to have a nested closure inside. And if you look with any documentation tool, you will have the right signature. If you use IPython, question mark, you will get the right signature, the right doc strings, uh, everything. As I was saying, I had this user request to decorate uh, async functions, and you can do it, and you need uh, this kind of uh, async decorator. This is a new feature. I don't use personally this uh, async uh, stuff because uh, until recently I, I was stuck with Python 2.7. Now we are using Python 3, so maybe I will use this. But um, I'm here to say to you, if you use this feature and you find bugs, let me know. The user who asked for this uh, is happy. So I hope uh, is, uh, it will work out for you, but I'm not. Uh, and uh, there is a very new feature that I implemented three months ago. And now you can do this kind of decorators, okay, with a parentheses without, and if there are no parentheses, essentially you have a, a default message, okay. This, and this actually I use in production because <laughs> I need a decorator like that. And can, you can implement this in, a, I don't know, six or seven line of codes with the decorator module. Try to implement this without. It's tricky, trickier than it seems. And that's what, uh, everything I wanted to say. Check it out. A round of applause, please. Okay. Take it away. Okay, so, uh, my name is uh, 
Jorge Jardines, I'm a software engineer. I'm working for TrustU at the moment. And I used to say that I'm a better dozen than a coder. Um, and when I arrived to Spain some years ago, uh, there was a big bubble of dancing salsa there. Uh, you actually ask uh, almost anyone uh, in the clubs, and everyone used to dance salsa, apparently. So uh, this is the question that you get more often when you go to a salsa club. Do you want to dance? And this is actually what you expect to, to feel uh, in the dancing floor. Uh, but it happened that what you actually receive or feel is that, that your movements does not match with, the, with your dancer partner. And, uh, huh? yeah, it's really fun. But not really what you expected. So, uh, I found some similarities that uh, with some trending topics in our industry related to this. So this is what I understand by salsa or by dancing in general, is that you need to keep the communication with your dance partner. You need to make sure that you both are found, not only one side. Uh, you need to listen to the music. and You need to keep the tempo. So I found really that the issue is not in the way you dance or the way I dance. The issue is uh, that we don't teach this from the very basic moments when you start learning. Uh, we are so focused on the figures and we don't go to the basics, which is listen to music and keep the tempo. So if you do less figures and keep more the tempo, you maybe have more fun. So in our industry, we found so much this question. And the people are always saying, yes, I am AI. What do you mean by AI? Well, we do stand-up meetings. We are fast. We even do continuous integration. <laughs> and we do retrospective. Time? Two minutes and 30 seconds. So, I don't know if you see some parallel lines here. <laughs> so, salsa is trending, agile is trending, everyone done salsa, everyone is agile. <laughs> I feel the same. So um, I guess that we don't dance the same AI at the end. So what I understand by AI is adaptability, risk management, and learning and innovation culture. So uh, still we don't dance the same AI is we don't do this, in my opinion. We need to have real continuous integration, continuous delivery, self-static code, code quality, Embrace, embracing the change, the boss culture, and continuous improvement culture and refactoring. That way we will feel like the real picture of dancing as couples. Thank you, that's all. What a great talk to end the evening. Thank you, Jorge. So a big round of applause. A big round of applause for all our speakers this evening.